In this episode, we take the king out of the ground, restore her, and then finally go test her out in War Thunder. Hello and welcome back to another great episode of Restoring Tanks. This week, I have got an absolute beast to go and uncover. It is the Tiger 2H, the King Tiger. It is behind this forest somewhere in some sort of a field area. So give me a couple of seconds. Let me get myself set up. I'm going to go hunt for this thing and try and find out where it's located. So I have now moved the, the Jeep a little closer. There's the marker over there. It's in this field here. Um, we have got permission, obviously, from the landlord to dig up his field. Uh, he's not planting anything yet at the moment. So let's get cracking. And there we have it. It's the Tiger 2H. Yeah, looks in a pretty good nick actually not many of these have actually ever been dug up so i'm quite fortunate to dig this one up now restore it and then we're gonna go test it out in war thunder later okay this is actually a really good nick one it's still got its full cannon left it's got a couple of road wheels even some tracks really cool okay it's missing an exhaust in the back that's okay this side a little bit more road wheels missing torsion bar suspension still looks in place mm, yeah this is a, this is a pretty good specimen i'm quite happy with this one good find <laughs> Aha, there she is. The Tiger 2H. What a magnificent piece of equipment this is. And I'm so looking forward to taking her out in War Thunder a little bit later. But before I do that, I'm going to have to strip her down. I'm going to have to move the turret over there and obviously the engine. Work on all the ins and outs and uh, clean her up and get her ready for some testing. Now, obviously, there's quite a lot to this tank, uh, quite a thick history around the Tiger II range of tanks, you know, from the uh, P version or the Porsche version, um, which actually, surprisingly, uh, the turret was uh, developed by Krupp for both the H and for the P. Uh, but there is some interesting information around that. There's a video that I have now added on uh, to this video, so you can have a look. Uh, that's around the Tiger II P if you're interested uh, but for now let me just uh, strip down this behemoth of a tank and uh, get it ready so before i can actually start with the needle file and all of the extra rust removal i have to remove all these extra bits and bobs you know such as the cable and the equipment so let me do that quickly get it all out and uh, obviously the ammo inside if there is any and then I'll start with the needle file.
All right, I think it's time for the sandblasting now. Let's get it down to bare metal. Okay, she is now bare metal in a good state here. I'm going to apply the primer now and then get the final coat on. Right, so there we have it uh, the mustard color that you would get on a lot of the German tanks uh, basically mainly used for desert combat but uh, still pretty cool absolutely phenomenal piece of uh, tank this uh, this Tiger 2H I'm very excited to test her out in War Thunder but I have to figure out uh, how to fix up that engine first and then fix up the turret and order in all the parts so let me do that now Get it over and done with, and then uh, we can scoot over and uh, battle her out. Okay, we've got, uh, well, half of a Maybach gasoline engine here, which I'm going to have to reconstruct. And once I've done that, then I'll be able to obviously get her inside and uh, patched up. So now you can have a look at this. This is a completely different looking engine once uh, after I actually have rebuilt it now. The Maybach uh, engine that is an absolute beast that will power this uh, massive Tiger tank. Really cool though. Took me quite some time to put it together but now she's pretty much ready to go. We need to just see if any other components are missing and then I'll sink her into the chassis and uh, get it all ready for us.
fascinating how big this turret actually is. Uh, I'm sitting in the loader position right now. We can move over quickly to the uh, commander slot, which is on the left-hand side with all of the periscopes. Really cool. It's massive, actually. Quite a phenomenal uh, setup or piece of engineering, really. Uh, currently at the moment, I think I have managed to put all the components back in. So the gun breach has now been uh, fitted in well with all of the extra little uh, bobs. Very interesting to see that the control panel doesn't look really that uh, complicated, actually. I guess during this time, everything was very much manually operated in terms of turning things with wheels and just having a couple of gauges. <laughs> So everything has now been assembled. The engine's already in. Uh, it's just for me now to put the turret on. And uh, before we go out to War Thunder, I thought it'd be interesting just to take you through the actual tank itself and how it looked inside as you were one of the actual tank drivers or the tank crew, basically, uh, during the Second World War. So we'll start off by going into the uh, commander's position. A little bit cramped if you ask me, but there is actually a gunner that sits right under you. So you're very much uh, still cramped. That's not that big of a deal, or well, that that big, as uh, what's portrayed in some of the movies. So you're sitting on the left-hand side. You've got all these periscopes around you that you can look outside to see, you know, where the obviously the enemy is located. You've got a small little control panel and dashboard as your access. Uh, and then you've obviously got your commander's hatch. You don't really have much access in terms of machine guns or anything like that. Um, and then, of course, there's the gunner optics just below you, which we'll move to shortly. So now as the gunner, you've got your main... Uh, sorry, that was the driver. Um, as the gunner, you've got your gunner optics, your periscope, that you will look through. You've got your gauges. And this is your control panel, actually, that you control. And then, and then of course... Uh, you have got your traversing hand wheels that you can elevate and move around. Quite cool. Massive gun breach. Uh, moving over to the loader side, actually. Let's have a look. The loader slots over here. Uh, you have got the MG 
a machine gun that you can work with, of course. And you are able to, you've got a little bit more space here that you are loading all the ammunition. So all the ammo is just below you and behind you. Very dangerous position to be in, of course, in the tank if the ammo detonates. Well, everyone's dead, but you're definitely first to go. Moving then over to the radio operator slot. So you're on the right, bottom right hand side here. You have also got a machine gun that you operate as well. And on the left, you've got all this radio equipment that you use to obviously communicate and uh, you can even pass on a couple of shells uh, from the right hand side down through towards the loader uh, if he needs a additional ammunition. And you've got a nice uh, backrest, you've got some spare parts of course, you know, some spare. Uh, all the spare parts are basically kept here to a degree, including spare ammo. You have got a periscope as well that you can peek through, uh, but your main kind of focus will be operating the radio and uh, being anti-infantry then uh last but not least let's just have a look at the driver's position so as the driver obviously you've got your gearbox you've got all your gauges uh, your dashboard to see what's going on on the right hand side uh pretty cramped actually even though this is one of the considered one of the bigger tanks in the uh, second world war you can see it's fairly still fairly cramped uh at least from a virtual point of view uh, very cool nonetheless, uh, the Tiger 2H. Look at this massive beast. Absolute huge cannon on it. Uh, super icon of the Second World War. Probably the most iconic tank out of them all is the King Tiger. Uh, this is the H variant. As you can see, it's got the flat. It does not have the, the shot traps. So it's got the flat uh, front mantlet. Really, really cool. I'm going to now scoot over to War Thunder. It is now finally time for us to go and test her out on the battlefield. This is an absolute amazing tank to drive. I can vouch for that. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Now that I've put it together after a tedious, long session, it is finally time. With that superior cannon, amazing armor, and of course, that engine. I took her out to the battlefield, and boy, oh boy, did she deliver. Swing, swing. There we go, another one. Now the tiger. We are the tiger. Yes. Push on to the enemy right now. So the Tiger 2H comes in at a battle rating of 6.7. Its research points is 71,000. Its purchasing cost 210,000 silver lions. With all the optional extras, it's going to cost you 61,600 research points and 102,600 silver lions. So best be prepared to spend on her. She is going to cost you, but she's well worth it. She has 150 millimeters of frontal hull armor. On the sides, we have 80 millimeters aside. The turret 
has 185 millimeters of armor and its sides also at 80 millimeters. And last but not least, the most effective part of this tank, the gun. Even if you are the pinnacle of World War II tanks, you're still capable to take on the Cold War era tanks with that cannon. The 88mm KWK is an absolute beast. I needed to remove that one very quickly because uh, that would have been the end of me if I didn't. Alright, I'm a little bit too close to the hill here, so what I'm going to have to do is look at working around. That's the M51 out of the picture. That's the Yelant I needed to remove. Got him. I have to admit, it was all worth it. If you enjoyed that video, thank you very much for tuning in. Here are two other videos that you might want to have a look at that's regarding the Tiger II tanks. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.